Hi there, and welcome to the What's New with Microsoft Office and Jamf Pro session. My name is Paul Bowden. I'm from the Office for Mac Engineering team out of Redmond, Washington. And I'm extremely grateful to the team at Jamf for inviting me to present today. And of course, grateful to you for spending the next 30 minutes listening to this session. So I spend about 50% of my time uh, talking and working directly with Mac admins, whether it's through Slack, email, and conference calls. You've got a lot on your plate. Patching and updating it seems to be the gift that keeps on giving. It really never stops. And it seems like every other day there's another story about security exploits or ransomware in the news. So you need to protect your business by staying up to date. Um, for users, the technology really is a means to an end. And your users need to be able to get their jobs done without kind of the other facets of IT getting in the way. And then finally, what I hear is, uh, you know, good Mac admins are hard to come by. And while some problems can be solved by adding people to your team, another solution is to make your jobs a little bit easier and more efficient. So my mission really is to reduce the burden on IT and improve the user experience. Normally, you can do one or the other, but my aim is really to, to do both at the same time. So um, let's get into our first topic. Over the last month, you'll have heard some noise about Office 2021 in the press. So let's talk about what it is, what it isn't, and what we've done here to improve your life with this release. So as you might have already guessed, 2021 is the successor to Office 2019. It's what we call a perpetual release where you activate the entire device rather than activate with a user account. There's some good news and bad news in terms of the feature set, depending on your perception. Uh, long gone are the days where our engineering team goes dark for a couple of years and we uh, rebuild the product from the ground up and then you know come back uh, a little later and show you like a brand new UI with you know different features in different places. Uh, so you know that was the past. Uh, in modern times, uh, what we have is we have incremental releases and they go out month by month uh, with features shipping with that cadence. So similar to the 2016 to 2019 update, the 2021 product is incremental from 2019. So there are some great new features, but nothing that would really require an end user training course. So indeed, 2021 contains a subset of the features available to Office 365 customers. And, and that's really another major point that I want to mention here. If you're already running with an Office 365 license, you don't really need to pay attention to the 2021 train. Now, some of you might have some machines in a lab or a classroom that have a volume license, and those are fair game for, for an update. But if you're already subscription, nothing to see here. So if you previously went through a 2016 to 2019 upgrade, you know, there was a little awkwardness um, because we needed to fork the build. What that looked like to you was two different build series. We had the 16.16 .16 range for Office 2016, and then 16.17 and later for 29 and 2019, and of course 365. Um, it got a little more awkward um, because we also had to change the application IDs in Mal, so it kind of made it a little bit hard to configure. So I'm pleased to report that in the 2021 release, we've been able to avoid the fork completely. And so starting with the 16.53 build, which was released in September, we support 365, 2021, and 2019 license types, all with the same installers and updates. So this makes it much easier to patch and manage devices because they all run the same bits. So no need to get fancy with smart groups anymore to categorize your different Office users. Um, of course, our products go end of life, so I want to tell you how that's going to work out. Um, Office 2019 goes end of life in October 2023, and that last build will be 16.78. So if you still have users running with a 2019 license type at that time, Mao is not going to offer updates beyond 16.78. And then starting with 1679, only 365 and 2021 activation will be allowed. 
Okay, so enough talk. Uh, let me show you what it looks like to upgrade a device from 2019 to 2021. So what I have here is I have uh, Word on the left and I have Excel on the top right. And then I have the command line down um, at the bottom there. And uh, what I want to show you is how easy it is to take a run-in installation of Office with 2019 license and update it in the background. Now, what we previously had to do with uh, uh, 2016 to 2019 is to kind of close all the applications and pester the user. So, uh, so let's get going with the demo here. So first off, I'm just going to prove to you that I really am running with a 2019 license type. So you can see the About box in Word says 2019. Also notice that I'm running build 1653, which is the minimum release that I need to support uh, 2021. Um, I'm now just going to run the uh, my uh, my little extension attribute, which shows me that we are in fact running a 2019 volume license. There's a new VL serializer with 2021. Typically, you would push this out via Jamf policy or maybe put it in self service. But but notice here, I'm running this without closing any of the applications. Excel here stays running. It still says volume license 2019. So no, uh, no, no pester in the user here at all. However, I'm now going to show you how, what happens when you quit and relaunch Excel. Excel is going to pick up on the fact that a 2021 license is present, and it will dynamically switch over to using that. And, and this is all possible because uh, Word is still using a 2019 license. You don't have to update all apps at the same time. You simply push out that serializer, and naturally, as the users uh, relaunch their apps, um, it'll get picked up. If I run my extension attribute again, you'll notice that it now reports that I'm running a stacked license, which is a dual 2021 and 2019 volume license. So, so there you go. It's like really easy, really nice way of uh, updating your users behind the scenes. Okay. So uh, I want to switch gears now and talk about the second topic of my session, and that is patching. Um, as most of you know, we have a, a well-established and predictable rhythm for releasing monthly updates. But you may have a large complex feet, uh, fleet, so a common question is how quickly should I update to a new release once we've sent it out to the, to the current channel? Now, it's going to be really easy for me to you know, sit here and say, well, you should update on the day of release and update ASAP. But uh, you know, that's usually not very realistic because you have large fleets. So I wanted to give you some more kind of realistic guidance on how we think about this question. Um, and, and kind of the answer is like the golden rule that, that I tell all of my customers is that 70% or more of your Mac should be running one of the most three recent monthly updates. So, uh, so today, um, 16.54 is in the current channel, and that was released just a week ago. So one of the three most recent updates would either be 16.54, 53, or 52. So if 70% of your devices are running one of those three, then from my perspective, you are made healthy and uh, you are keeping up to date uh, with updates as you go along. If you're on 16.51 or earlier, then you know that start you're starting to kind of drag behind a little bit there. So um, why did why did I say three? Is there any kind of like technical reason why it's you know three most recent rather than four most recent? So I kind of want to get into some of that and give you kind of the solid technical reasons why why that is so. So um, keeping up to date with security patches is, you know, unfortunately now a, now a fact of life. Um, this chart uh, shows the number of security patches that were released in each monthly Office update. It also gives us a color-coded breakdown of which apps were affected by a particular vulnerability. So you can see kind of dark blue is Word, green, Excel, et cetera. So as a Mac admin, it's important for you to read through the release notes for each monthly update and determine the risk to your fleet. 
that will in turn guide you and determine perhaps the urgency of uh, pushing out the updates. And uh, you can find a, a live version of this chart uh, on the macadmins.software site. So one of the great advantages of using Microsoft Auto Update, or MAU, as, uh, as I like to call it, is the ability to download binary delta update packages. So instead of uh, taking like a full reinstall of the application on an update, you just take kind of a sliver, you know, what's changed between uh, what you've got on disk already and, and what, the, what the new version has. So uh, this chart shows you the size of the monthly Office update from a network perspective. It's basically the size of the update packages uh, on the wire. Each app has its own update package. Uh, so for the kind of core five apps, you're going to have you know, five individual PKGs. And, uh, and what you see in terms of the size in the chart is the grand total. The size is going to fluctuate month to month depending on the amount of co-churn that's taken place. So it's interesting to see the bump in the 1644 release as we adopted the Universal 2 format to support uh, native Apple Silicon. And then likewise, we overhauled our grammar engine, which is used obviously for spelling and grammar in 1648 release, which is why kind of proportionally you see Word and Outlook are larger than the other app, app updates because grammar is only used in, in those two apps. And then probably one of the most valued features um, of our Delta me mechanism is the ability to produce these like super small updates if we need to release a hotfix. Um, kind of an out of band hotfix is, is a fairly rare occurrence, uh, thankfully, but when we do need to push something because of an urgent issue, uh, just like what we had to do in the 16.47.1 uh, update, you can see we were able to patch both Excel and OneNote with this kind of tiny nine megabyte over the wire download. So uh, it kind of keeps things like really fluid and, and, and nice and small there. So it's important to realize that the sizes you saw on the previous slide assume that you were already up to date before the monthly update happened. And we produced Delta packages based on the three most recent build window. And notice I said three most recent. Well, hopefully uh, you'll remember that from two minutes ago. So if you skipped last month's update, the deltas are slightly larger than if, uh, than, than kind of if you were up to date already. If, uh, if you're more than three months behind, we uh, fall out of the binary delta update window. And so the, the over the wire size will kind of be a serious hit um, as the update is essentially a reinstall of the product. And you can see on the slide here, it's like about 4.3 gigabytes if, if you're kind of over that, that three, uh, three month window. So definitely, you know, something to take into, into consideration if you need to skip an update for kind of whatever reason. Um, so we'll also display a reminder to users in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint when the build that they're running is older than 90 days. The the 90 day age of the uh, is based on the build time, which forms part of the build number and the system time. So kind of with the help of a date calculator, it becomes fairly easy to predict when the reminder will be displayed to users. So in my example here, the 1653 or September release, you can see that that build number was 21091200. So it was built on September the 12th. And then if you just add 90 days, that gets you to December the 11th. So if you still have a user run in the 1653 build on uh, December the 12th, then they're going to see the, uh, the kind of the nag uh, with inside the, uh, the, the, the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint apps. OK, one of the other. Um, uh, like larger subjects I want to touch on here uh, to do with patching is how we can reduce end user downtime. And the, you know, updates can be frustrating and um, they can be frustrating um, because of like the amount of kind of productivity loss 
while you're waiting for an update to complete. And, and sometimes we kind of joke about how, hey, you know, start the update, go grab a coffee while you're waiting. But, you know, seriously, with the number of apps and like OS updates, everything that they're running these days, you know, you get like a serious caffeine overload. So um, what we've done in Office to mitigate this issue is we use a, a cloning technique um, for updating each of the apps. Um, this cloning is automatically enabled in, in Mao when you have 15 gigabytes or more free disk space on the boot partition. So there's nothing you need to enable it apart from making sure you've got 15 gigs. So, um, so let me kind of walk you through the slide. It's got various kind of build animations on here. So I'll, I'll try and kind of follow it through one by one. So, um, so we have Outlook and it's installed in the applications folder and you can see it's kind of running on the screen and it's uh, 16.53, that's the build number. So, um, so Mao is going to kind of wake up every 12 hours and check to see if there are updates. Um, if it does find an update, the first thing it's going to do is uh, use APFS uh, to create a clone or kind of a shadow image of that app bundle. And it creates it in uh, slash library caches, Microsoft auto update helper clone. So it's at the computer level. Um, fortunately, APFS is like super fast for us. So this cloning technique takes, you know, two or three seconds to complete. So now that we have a clone available, what we do is we go ahead and update uh, or, or download that update from the Office Content Delivery Network. And um, probably it's going to be a binary Delta update. So it's going to be pretty small. And we're going to store that with inside the, the tempter. And then Mao behind the scenes is going to apply the update directly to the clone. And once that's done, uh, we'll do a code sign verification to make sure the kind of app is wholesome and it passes all code signature checks. And all of this has been happening behind the scenes. The, the, you know, the user is completely unaware up to this point that the really anything is, is going on. Um, but now Mao needs the user's attention. So it's going to notify the user that an update is available and it's going to wait. In fact, it's going to wait for 72 hours um, to, to see if the user uh, is going to react to that notification and give us the opportunity to, uh, to update. So um, let's say that the user tears down the application. They basically quit Outlook. Mao is going to be watching that process lifecycle. It's going to notice that the, the Outlook process is closed down, and it immediately will swap in the clone, again, using APFS. And, and as I said before, it takes about two to three seconds for this, uh, for this to, to, to take place. So it's super quick. And then uh, the user can immediately uh, relaunch Outlook, and now they're up and running on the new build. So that's our 16.54 release here. So no more waiting for kind of progress bars, no need to grab a coffee. Um, on the Intel-based Mac here that I'm running, the kind of the end-to-end -end time between, you know, when I hit quit on 16.53 to when 16.54 is rendering messages and I can interact with the app, it's uh, 22 seconds. That's my kind of war clock time. So, so really quick indeed. Um, okay, let's go to uh, another topic here. The, the other frustration with app updates is knowing whether they're going to work or not. And if your users are going to have problems the moment they update, so there are many kind of third-party add-ins and workflows out there, and it's kind of virtually impossible for us to test all the different scenarios. Um, now, we do have uh, beta and preview channels available to you, so you can kind of get a jump start on upcoming changes. Um, beta releases uh, two times a week, um, so it's kind of almost nightly builds. Preview, uh, you get two updates a month, so it's kind of a little slower. And, uh, and you get kind of like an eight day lead time on uh, when a build is gonna hit the current channel. However, in a large complex fleet, um, sometimes you need kind of just more than these channels. And especially for kind of the, when builds hit the current channel, I've seen people having a need to introduce an artificial delay. 
And so in the past, we've kind of recommended that you set up a custom manifest server. So this is your own kind of HTTPS server. Um, and, and you manually kind of copy collateral and keep that up to date um, and you point Mao at that. And uh, and although that's been kind of working really well for, for, for many Mac admins, we kind of noticed that a lot of these custom servers were kind of set up the same, or they were there to perform the same purpose. Uh, things like, you know, just, you know, delay my updates for, for a week while, you know, I get the chance to, you know, validate that, you know, Outlook isn't broken in, in the new update. Um, and so, you know, we kind of looked at the patterns of these and said, well, it's kind of like a whole bunch of overhead uh, that we're that we're putting on Mac admins by getting them to set up their own manifest server. So, can we do something a little smarter here and um, perhaps you know have something kind of more hosted uh, and managed by us? And so. Um, we have uh, a couple of sets of new capabilities that are available in Jamf Pro. So the first one is uh, what we call deferred channels. And uh, they create some breathing room for your IT validation. So for example, you can say, I want to defer my updates for seven days. Um, because these are configuration profile based, you can even create waves, like release waves across your fleet. So you could either have like a smart group or a static group and everybody in, you know, the, your early adopters group gets the, the updates, you know, three days after release. The rest of your fleet could get it like 14 days after the release. So it's really flexible. Um, What's also nice about the deferred channels is you you set them and forget them. You you literally define you know defer seven days and then you never have to revisit that config profile again. One of the considerations is that this only defers the core five Office apps of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneNote. Um, other Mao integrated apps such as Edge and Company Portal, Defender, they will update immediately based on their, their release cadence to the current channel, which is typically what you want for those apps. There were in kind of another set of scenarios that we noticed, and um, this is mainly where customers wanted to pin uh, Office versions, uh, where they wanted to kind of like start or stop updates on their signal. Perhaps they had to go through kind of management to get approval to begin an update. Um, uh, sometimes they needed to just suspend all updates for a particular change, uh, change freeze, like, uh, you know, end of fiscal year. And then uh, also, like, if you have these kind of add-ins, sometimes you need to be able to set a maximum ceiling. So uh, say, you know, you don't want Office to upgrade beyond 1653 right now until you've had chance to figure out what's going on with this, this add-in compatibility. Um, the considerations for using this type of uh, kind of pinning is that uh, there is ongoing profile maintenance. So every time you want to kind of start updating to the next version, you need to go back to the config profile and go change the selector. Um, also, we, uh, we, we don't mean this for, for you to be able to stay on a, you know, an old version of Office you know, indefinitely. So uh, only use it for kind of cases where you need to introduce a delay of just up to, up to six months. Any beyond, anything beyond six months is really not kind of in the scope of what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, so um, so let's get into a demo of uh, the two capabilities that I, I kind of just introduced there. Um, so first up, we're going to look in the Jamf UI, and we're going to have a look at uh, what would be like a, a new macOS configuration profile. Um, of course, we, uh, we we hide ourselves away under application and custom settings in external applications. And here you can configure the com.microsoft.autoupdate2 uh, preference domain. Um, kind of pro tip for you, uh, always choose kind of the, the latest version available of um, of the manifest in here. It may not match exactly what you, the kind of the version of Mao that you're currently running, but uh, uh, but it's kind of close enough and, uh, and, and it'll work great for you. So uh, in the kind of the properties here, um, if I scroll down to my update channel, you can see by default it's current channel. 
Um, what I want to do is I switch to current channel deferred and then a new kind of selector pops up. And this is where I get to choose between those kind of red or those green channels. So defer for a, just a, a number of days or pin to a particular uh, channel. So if I say defer 28 days, one thing I kind of want to show you is what happens behind the scenes. This is the, the kind of the P-list view of what's going to be sent down to the client. And all the way at the bottom, uh, you'll notice that we're setting a key called manifest server, and that points to a location on the Office CDN uh, where that 28-day uh, collateral is stored. So that's how it works. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the cloning techniques. Um, so here I'm running Excel. I'm running a build um, kind of 801. Uh, uh, that's what I'm running here at the moment. Uh, show you that I have the clones. Uh, find a window up where I can see my, my clone that's going to be built in a second. I'm going to kickstart Mao from the command line. Kind of another pro tip here. The way to do this is to uh, defaults delete the last update uh, value and then run launch CTL start with com.microsoft.update.agent. Uh, you don't need any kind of pseudo permissions for this. So Mao is going to be running in the background, and within a few seconds, we should see some activity going on in the in the clones finder window. So right now, Mao is going to be detecting the updates. It's now going ahead and cloning Excel. You see that little flicker on the app icon. That means that the clone is now done. Mao is now downloading the binary delta, and in a few seconds, you'll see another flicker. There it is. And the last modified time has been updated. So Mao has now updated the clone. And it's now sent an Apple event up into uh, Excel to say that an update is available. And of course, you know the user can click Restart now. It's going to be very quick. Um, the uh, other thing I'm going to show you is just like, what happens if the user just quits Excel? Well, maybe this is just part of like you know Mac OS patching. Um, you saw that clone disappear like very quickly within a couple of seconds. And now if I just like relaunch Excel, you know, almost like immediately after quitting, and I look at the about box, you'll notice that in fact now this build has been updated. So uh, again, uh, you know, hopefully you can see how very little user downtime was incurred uh, as part of this update. And even though I just went from kind of one uh, kind of insider build to the next insider build, it's exactly the same effect. Um, if you were going from you know a monthly release to another monthly release, so um, so kind of you know some some great technology in there. Okay, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope to catch you again in the channel soon. Take care.